All right, and with that, we do have our start time of five o'clock has gone and passed. We do have both of our racers up on the RMTP. It's like stakes loading into their game, and then we'll get our seeds running, and we'll have a crystal match between Cyber One and Stake. Once again, Cyber One of Boiler fame uh, had a record of 14 and 7, graduating from the Obsidian tier to Crystal two weeks ago, it looks like. And Stake with a record of 9 and 12, being in the Crystal tier since the beginning of Season 5. Cyber does have a faster average win rate and a best win. By about 30 seconds uh, for both of them on stake. So it looks like Cyber's the faster racer, but stake definitely has that experience and can easily take this himself. The first hurdle of the match is entering in your seed correctly. We had some troubles with that earlier today, so both being experienced racers, I'm sure this will not be a problem. Cyber is currently sitting at three points with a win already this week. While Stake is at two. So both of them will be looking to take three points away from this match. And both of them will be at the top of the Crystal standings. Move into their promotion matches. And we're off. Both of them going down right away to find their purple chest, which contains a Earth spell. Dark Freak recently put on a clinic on how to use this spell to its advantage. It can be very fast and very useful. Monkey Paw in a Wrap Trap there. And we find the quartz armor in this black chest, so we'll have a little protection for both racers as they move on through zone one here, defeating their red dragons. Looks like Cyber's gonna get up their luck charm right away here. Stick finding a gold warhammer in their 1 3 chest. And Cyber farming some extra bombs here too, so with the bomb advantage early on. Looks like Stick is gonna be running this gold warhammer as cyber picks his up as well there's a pain shrine here but it looks like they're both going to skip it stake already have doing that cyber does take a little hit there but quartz armor is negating some of that damage stake opting to kill the conga line before smashing king conga in his face with that warhammer checking the purple chest for a ring of luck not the greatest thing you want to see in that chest. Finding a quick another purple chest here with a fear scroll in it. So we might be doing some shopping for free here. Looks like we have a potion on our 2-1 as well. Cyber going for the black chest, finding an obsidian longsword. Which will be able to push a little bit quicker than this uh, golden warhammer that Stake is sporting. Both of them getting their potions with no problems. And Cyber has already taken the lead over Stake. The Stake uses a defensive earth spell to keep that Minotaur at bay. 
Now you're seeing how the Obsidian Longsword is able to scoot past enemies a little quicker than the Golden Warhammer. So we're going to do some shopping here, and that shop has that heavy plate in it. Looks like we're going to bomb for it. Maybe pick pick up some shurikens as well. I'm sure if Steak is screen watching, he is going to see that shop as well and head straight up for it, which he is doing. He has to be a little more careful with this Warhammer. And that top mushroom, which he's already taken out. And Death Metal's your zone 2 boss, and he's use, uh, Steak is using the Fear Scroll to his advantage there. So he keeps the shopkeep alive, so he'll be able to farm up later in uh, the match here. Whereas Cyber has killed their shopkeep and will have to deal with a ghost. Cyber already beating Death Metal and finding a bomb spell in their purple chest. Stake trying to use some shurikens to speed up this Death Metal match. The one damage uh, Warhammer, it, it can get pretty slow. We'll see if he switches off weapon here to a Blood Spear, which is not really that great either. One damage going into zone three is going to make for uh, a hard time catching up. I think Cyber is uh, getting a big advantage here with that early Obsidian Longsword. Stake using a defensive earth spell to help him out in this 3-1. Uh, Cyber finding a uh, Ring of Peace and a Ring of Pain uh, in a barrel and a chest. Going to stick with the Ring of Peace. Make things go a little bit easier here. And Cyber's down to their Zone 3 boss. Stake finding a Obsidian Flail. We'll be able to switch off that here as he'll need to to stay alive. Cyber 1 using the Shurikens to get Death Metal off of his uh, spot there, but does get knighted in the process, so no flawless for Cyber 1. Where Stake will be going up to the third lane straight up. Oh, does get hit too, so no flawless for either on Death Metal 1. Or Death Metal 3, if you will. A Courage Shovel in uh, the red chest here. That's going to be an easy pickup. Scoot along through the walls. Both our racers are losing a lot of their health, though. They do have that potion in tow, so they are still relatively safe. But would like to keep that as much as possible. Stake dealing with uh, these Blade Masters and Flails. Decides to use an Earth spell to get through. They're both on their four ones. A titanium cat was found in uh, four two. Cyber one switching off to that. It's going to be able to scoot along a little bit quicker. Stake still dealing with his obsidian flail, which will be more defensive for him here, but it won't really allow him to scoot, and he just gets teleported way back to 4-2's beginning with that Telemonkey, so he has a lot of ground to catch up now as Cyber 1's moving into the Fortissimal 4. Oh, stake. He has goo Earthed spelled himself. He has lost his potion. He is down to half a heart. He is in dire straits here. The Cyber 1's dealing with Fortissimo. Not perfectly, so missing boss chests there as well. Stake finding uh, some ballet shoes, which will synergize nicely with his obsidian flail, but once again, being half a heart, he needs to farm up and find some health here. This is allowing Cyber 1 to push on ahead through his zone 5. And that Courage Shovel really pushing hard through Zone 5. Finding a trapdoor, Lex to take it. Handles it just fine with that Titanium Cat. And Stake's looking to take out Fortissimo here. Does flawlessly. Does he spend time to check a chest? He probably should. He should be looking for some health here. Takes the purple chest, which has a shield scroll in it, so that'll help him move along through at least one situation. Assuming he remembers to take it. Cyber 1 on to his, uh, who is this guy? Dead Ringer. It is a right side spawn, so it's a very easy kill here. And moving right on to his death metal fight. Necrodancer fight, not death metal. 
Looks like he does have enough bombs to just go through the stage, so no butt puzzles will be done here today. During this match, anyway. Dad's swatting at the Necker Dancer with his flail. You need the loot for that. Stake onto his 5-3, so does have a chance to catch up here. <laughs> he uses a protective earth spell in his uh, trapdoor arena. It's one way to deal with uh, the zone 5 shenanigans. But Cyber One is already uh, two hearts left on Necker Dancer here. One heart left. Doesn't look like he's going to die here, so he will take the first round of this match. Just over eight minutes. 8.18 race time. Good work. Good work by Cyber. Taking the first point over stake here. Looks like we're going to hop into our next race right away, wasting no time. This good speedrunner should be doing. GG's all around. A good race. Uh, Stake started out ahead, but Cyber was able to push forward with that Obsidian Broadsword, uh, Obsidian Longsword that he found in the uh, Zone 1 Black Chest. Alright, our seeds are up. We're ready for the second race. There are a bunch of races going on right now. There's four other races going on right now that start at 5 o'clock. Another Crystal Tier race, uh, I believe another Obsidian, and then a few Blood Tier races. So lots of Necker Dancer to go around here. Both of them going down on their 1-1. One -one. That's usually going to be the wrong way here, which is what it looks like, and uh, they both reset. They do find their Zone 1-1 one, one, uh, red chest here, which has a shopkeep familiar. So we'll see some heals from our shop, shop friend. Now they'll be looking to find their stairs or a trap door. Get out of this 1-1. One, one. It's like neither of them are opting to activate their shopkeeper familiar. Maybe trying to set up a... Uh, no problem, Leprechaun Gold Pile, but they do pop them on the stairs, so saving the frames is what we're doing. Stake does a right side familiar, Cyber does the left side. You find this glass shop, which Stake's going to find some armor first, as well as Cyber, and they'll have uh, a glass build. This is going to allow them a little more flexibility in uh, Zone 1 here, being able to open up barrels. And uh, if they find any crack walls, they'll be able to do that as well. Cyber spending the time to get the Leprechaun and that Lucky Charm while Stake pushes on ahead. Does find a crack wall here. Is it a food shop? We won't know from Stake's side, but Cyber may check it itself. Finds a uh, Mimic Red Chest with a monkey paw in it. So we're going to see some frozen monkeys this run. Ooh, and some Boots of Pain in a, uh, a barrel. That's a good find, especially on a dagger build which I assume we'll be switching off after this Fortissimo fight. Stake going for Purple Chest, and we're finding a Ring of Shielding, so maybe we might be staying on this. It'll be a lot more optimal on Cyber's side with that uh, Boot of Pain. Healing up correctly with the Shopkeeper Familiar to get that Boots of Pain damage back. And we're going to be pushing through... Uh, zone 2 here. Stake does find a glass spear in uh, their glass shop. And Cyber 1 correctly is staying on their dagger to utilize their boots of pain. That's why you saw him uh, skip that glass spear. You'll be able to scoot past a little bit quicker through enemies with that dagger. 
So right now, a stake with the inferior build again will need to be push, uh, pushing as strong as you can to maintain this lead over Cyber. And he'll have to deal with this adventure bat as a bunch of ghasts and a mole come along to destroy his ring of shielding, but he is down to his death metal fight in zone 2 as Cyber is coming into 2-3. So about a floor ahead here. See another purple chest, and it's an Earth spell coming back for this race as well. Cyber using his pain to just deal with death metal that way, not even using his sword. And Stake finding a Shriner takes the boss shrine and uh, the titanium um, warhammer, but leaves the armor charm where it is deciding to keep his bombs, so he's just going to have a 2 damage Warhammer instead of a possible 3. And it looks like Cyber's going to skip that room altogether, so now Cyber does not have to deal with two mini-bosses like Stake will have to. And Cyber's still doing 3 damage with the Pain or 4 damage with his Dagger. Looks like we're going to kill a Shopkeeper here to get that Heavy Glass, as well as the Ring of Thorns for some health over on Cyber's side. The stake is really going to need to push here to maintain this lead because Cyber will be coming up rather quickly with this build he's put together. And with the Frost Dragon here being stuck on that and uh, freezing stake twice, that is uh, a lot of time. A lot of time lost. But down to the Coral Rift fight first. We'll see an Earth spell as he goes straight up the middle to one-shot Coral Rift. Uh, but can't do that because of the Warhammer. So the Warhammer getting caught on that. We'll see Cyber do that on his side. Using a defensive Earth spell there to deal with that swarm. Unless Cyber opts to not blood Earth, which would, yes, be the wrong idea because he does get that quick kill. We find a, uh, a shield spell in the purple chest, which is good for both racers. More so for Stake, as he has a lot more chance to take damage. Both are going to skip that bomb spell on 4-1. And Cyber's breaking his uh, ring of shielding early on in this zone. And then using a shield spell to clean up the mini boss room. Looks like Stake found a Shrine of Darkness. So he'll have mapping through zone 4 here in zone 5. Which, if Cyber's watching, will actually be able to use to his advantage. Also, Stake getting the uh, less aggro from enemies will help him a lot through zone 5 as well. He'll have to deal with less enemies coming towards him, which is beneficial with his... Uh, his Warhammer here because he has to take on everything. Getting stomped by a ogre hiding in the shadows there breaks his glass shovel. And Cyber having some difficulty with uh, a blue dragon using the earth spell to uh, get him out of that situation. Stake's able to walk right through this goo without hesitating, having those uh, explorer boots on. Cyber 1 down to a glass bib and has broken, now broken the glass bib and uh, is down to a shard. So here's an opportunity for Stake to push a little bit harder because Cyber is going to need to find something else to replace this. And a transmog shop will definitely do that, bringing that obsidian whip. Glass, okay, obsidian axe, there we are. We'll take that. And Stake completes his death uh, deep blues fight just as Cyber 1 enters it. Using the axe to sweep it up very efficiently. Stake switching off his Ring of Shadows or a Ring of War, bringing his Titanium Warhammer up to 3 damage now, so he'll be able to one shot almost everything. Minus the mini bosses. So Stake's doing a great job of keeping his lead and maintaining it, but now he has to look for a second mini-boss in this gigantic room. It's sitting in the bottom left corner. That is unfortunate, because that allowed Cyber 1... Oh, taking a lot of hits here, actually, in his, in his mini-boss room. is down to half a heart. 
We'll want to use that shopkeeper familiar to get some heals up. Has some cookies to do that as well. Using the shield spell to get through this shop. Or mini boss room. And goes down, Cyber 1. Looks like they're pushing a little too hard to keep up with stake here. I'm not entirely sure how he went down. It looked like he was trying to heal as he got hit. We do have a right side spawn for Dead Ringer. Stake's going to be very safe about this. Take care of Sarcophagus. Bombing the bells. He has enough bombs if he wants to. Needs to save one here. Which he does. Now we'll have Dead Ringer into the gong. Oh, Stake actually getting the karate guy. We were able to uh, hit that uh, Dead Ringer just like that. That's pretty cool. Actually, what he did, uh, the Dead Ringer was charging him, and uh, he struck Dead Ringer back, so the uh, Ring of War would send Dead Ringer back into the gong. So now Stakes looking at his build. He may be regretting picking up that Karate Guy, because now he can get shot pretty hard. But what he is doing here right now, he's letting the song play out, so he can use the Shield Spell bug. So when he puts his last bomb uh, to get Necrodancer off his stage, he'll activate his shield spell, which will stay activated for as long as all those beats he spent on uh, the buttons entering the room. So this shield spell is going to last pretty much the entire uh, Necrodancer boss fight here. So really smart play by him, being extra safe, seeing how Cyber 1 has to start their seed all over. Getting some good teleports here, good lures. Making sure to keep Dad alive. And you can see just how long this shield spell is lasting. The entire fight here. So Stake wins this second match. The time of 10 minutes and 9 seconds. In-game time of 9.45. Well done. <laughs> and Cyber with a frustration chart throw. Excellent finish by Stake there. Both racers pushing each other. Stake just getting the early lead and maintaining it. Should make, uh, allowed Cyber to make some poor decisions to try to make up some time. Spending a little too much help. We'll have a rubber match here to see who gets the two points. Pretty much right after this race, I'll be hosting up one of the other commentation uh, commentators that are doing this right now. Um, we'll be shooting for Naaman because she is doing another crystal match here as well. That kind of depends on who finishes first. All right, and we're off for our third race. <laughs> a titanium harp into a Shriner for the first uh, moves of this match. Stake is gonna spend some time to get a glass harp, I'm assuming. Nope, doing the Shrine of Risk and restarting. That was, that was a good, good option here because if he found something worthwhile, he could make that lead early. And there's not much time lost here because now he could, he could watch where Cyber went for uh, the exit stairs and just head, head that, that way himself. Um, Cyber did take a hit by that Minotaur. So he's already down to one heart. So this uh, blood shop is going to be a little more interesting. Can take the snow bro. Maybe using the curse potion to get those three hearts back. Yes, he does. We got purple hearts versus red hearts here. Cyber will be looking for some early food here to regain those red hearts. Stake is just going to opt to skip that blood shop, seeing it on Cyber one side, doesn't want anything to do with it. So rip, uh, 
Snow Bro for steak. And that's a good shopkeeper there. Has a battle shovel, a gold axe, and some cheese. Personally, I would be going for that gold axe. Move very fast. It looks like both racers will be switching to a... Nope. Uh, only Cyber going for a Titanium Spear. Stick's going to hang on to that, that harp. Cyber 1 able to do the throw strat on Core Riff here with that spear. So we'll, we'll be seeing a lot quicker fight from him there. Does find a Ring of Frost in his purple chest. Very nice ring to pair together with the Titanium Spear. Stake is trying to save a bomb on this Coral Rift fight, but ends up having to take it. And is now having a very long Coral Rift fight. Cyber 1 finding some glass shoes before taking their mini boss down. They'll protect against ooze, uh, ice, hot coals. Uh, it will not protect you against spike traps. So keep an eye out for those. Stake trying to utilize this harp as best as he can with this frost charm. Pretty much he can smack in one direction, it'll freeze everything. I think that's how it works. Cyber One finding a food shop here. He'll be able to get that purple heart back if he decides to eat these cookies. Using one for an iframe there against the mole attack. Very impressive. And they are both pretty much beat for beat going into their 2-3. We have another crack wall here, which is your conjurer shop. We're going to see some armor. Wow, first one's a heavy plate. That's pretty cool. It's going to be an easy decision. And Stake's going for the big dig. He has a three damage harp. Let's go. <laughs> Rinsing right through those uh, Black Knight shields. Very safe builds from both racers here. Cyber One going to be checking uh, his black chest, trying to get off of this spear, but finds a golden broadsword. Where Stake is already set on his build. He's ready to go. He's not even checking any of those chests. Does find some extra bombs here. Seven bombs. Cyber trying to get off this titanium spear. It looks like he's still shopping. Picks up the miner's cap as Stake moves down to their 3-3. Three, three. Finding an early trap door. And that big dig is really allowing him to open up some space here and see where he needs to go. Looks like Cyber was screen watching and went the same direction as Stake did. Sees that black chest and is gonna switch off to the Sicilian broadsword. And Stake's down to their zone three boss, it's King Kanga. We'll be expending a bomb here to get Kanga off his uh, throne. Possible Azuma Strat. Nope, just bomb it. Yes, the Azuma Strat modified, I guess you could say. Using the double click. He's onto his zone for it. Cyber attempting to do the same tactic, but uh, gets hung up on it. Stake finding some ham, getting back to full health. And Stake just tanking all this damage to get down to his, his stairs that much quicker. Cyber using his cookies during that iframe to protect against that bomb. Also activating his gluttony charm. Stake instantly using his shield spell or his shield scroll that he found right before this mini boss room. To push on through. As Cyber 1 is close on his heels. Plenty of bombs here, so bombs shouldn't be a difference between either racer coming into Zone 5 and uh, the Necrodancer fights here. Stake in a little trouble with this swarm, though. But does make it down the stairs a couple beats before Cyber does. We have a deep blues fight. Well, Stake's going to be able to push up right through the middle here with that harp. Cyber does get dunked by the queen. 
But steak is already gonna go ahead and skip the chests anyway. Cyber does have that ham for extra safety with all those hearts, while Steak has his his purple potion, his his curse potion, for his extra bit of health. Uh, they both go down their trap door into zone five, and we're almost beat for beat going into this race here, the end of the race. Both of them taking a wrong turn at uh, Albuquerque there and opening up one door they shouldn't have, but they do find the correct door afterwards into their mini boss room. Both of them taking a few hits, but uh, going down to their next floor. Uh, Cyber did expend his ham to get those hearts back. And Stake may be pushing a little bit here and opting to go for his cursed. Yep, right there, he popped his curse potion to go ahead. Cyber has taken the lead here going into the dead ringer fight. We have a left side spawn. So we're going to see some Japanese strats. Oh, but Cyber's a little off the rails here, but able to correct it just fine. Stake doing the Oblivion strat. Most impressive Dead Ringer strat there is, in my opinion. And we're on the Dead Ringer fight. This is the Necker Dancer fight. A little slower on Stake's side, so it's going to come down to teleportations here. Cyber's already got two hearts down before Stake has. Oh, but Cyber's getting some bad teleports here, so they're almost beat. Oh, Cyber's going ahead here. Cyber just needs one more hit. And Cyber's down there first. That is a close match. Just over eight minutes. It looks like Cyber takes the win there, but couple frames difference there it could be up for contention but i'm gonna go ahead and give cyber the win already excellent final match there by both of our racers both should be very proud of their performances as uh being in crystal tier we'll have those but we are going to send you guys over to one of the other amazing commentators we have right now um, I'm going to see where Naaman's match is before we send you over there. If not, we'll send you elsewhere. Thank you for coming out for this. All right. The Squega Ekeon match is still going on, so we're going to host up Naaman, and I'll see you guys all later.